I'm Angela Allen, and I was on the second unit in the sewers and on the day unit, and then back in the studio uh, when we went back to London. And what was your the job? Second I was the continuity girl. Uh -huh. uh, Guy. Uh, I'm Guy Hamilton. I was the first assistant, and uh, we had three units, and I had to chase around Carol, who directed all three because he didn't like second units. <laughs> and I'm Simon Callow, and I'm, I'm here because I know a little bit about Orson Welles, but mostly I'm here to learn from Angela and uh, Guy. Um, so here's the first image, which takes us straight into Zithers, um, which was a completely extraordinary idea, uh, as I understand it, to use a zither uh, 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 as the sole accompaniment to a movie. The, um, <coughs> Carl Hartle, who'd been an assistant before the war to Alexander Corder, uh, was now running his own studio and helped Alex Corder very much to set the Viennese crew up. And he gave a party to welcome uh, Carol and a few other people which was a very uh, rather staid party because nobody spoke English. And Carol was fascinated by a little man who was sitting in the corner playing this instrument. And Carol said, what is it? And I had no idea, but of course, no assistant director ever admits that he doesn't know. So I said, oh, Carol, everybody <laughs> knows that, and went away and discovered <laughs> what it was. And I came back and Carol was like a sort of in front of a cobra. Uh, and I said, it's a zither. And he said, a what, a zither? Um, well, we've got to... And he then said, uh, I want to record because I'm sure we've got somewhere in the picture we can use it. I rang Mrs. Hartle the next day and thanked her for the uh, kindness. Can I have the address of the Zither player? And she said, but no, no, no. They come with the drinks and the glasses when you give a party in Vienna. It is all the, can you give me the catering? She thought it was very, very odd. <laughs> and I handed it over to Hugh Percival to sort this out. To cut a short story long, uh, Sunday was the nearest time that we could get it, and the funny little man called Anton Karras turned up on a Sunday morning, uh, and Carol's in his pyjamas, we're all in our pyjamas, because it's the only day that we can get a rest, and he sits down and he plays, Guy, get the sound unit, and so I dug them out of bed, and they carried some portable equipment, and we put it in the bedroom, and then the maid started to go up and down, so we put pillows and things to soundproof, and we recorded yards and yards of this music. Yes. Well, fantastic. We'll come back to it because it's, <laughs> it, it keeps cropping up, of course, all the way through, and became legendary in its time. Um, the voice that, that introduces the film is, is, Carol. is Carol Reed. And you'd worked with Carol Reed before you'd just come from Fallen Idol. Yes. Uh, and to work for Carol was an absolute joy. Uh, because he'd been an assistant himself, so that he appreciated <laughs> what see. went on. <laughs> and I decided I would not be an assistant director, I'd be a director's assistant, which is much more interesting, to find out what matters to the director and what he doesn't care so much about. Right. Uh, and Carol appreciated that, and uh, we got on splendidly. Um, well, Angela, <laughs> from your point of view, as a continuity uh, uh, assistant, what uh, was your relationship with... Uh, read like? Well, it was my first time with him, and as I said, I was in this, on the second unit and also on the day unit. And, you know, he taught me, I think, more than anybody else um, in the business. He was a wonderful man to learn from. And uh, from everything that I've read, an extraordinarily uh, gracious and uh, funny and uh, affable and good-natured man. Yes, there, there were moments where 
he goes off into a world of his own. I mean, you can talk to him and it goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> but that's very, very useful because you've asked a question about uh, how many people do you want in the cemetery? Uh, and there's no answer. And you then can say to the production office, forget shooting the cemetery scene next week because the governor has no idea, he's worried about something, yes. and until I get, yeah. oh, I don't need anybody, or I want a thousand people, yes. um, there's no point, in, because otherwise we're going to waste our time. Right. I see, yes. Yes. Uh, um, so... Um, this is the cemetery This scene. is the cemetery, of course. But we just quickly to cover the, the introduction of the film, um, that was shot by which unit, all the, all the set-up stuff of Vienna? Uh, Schneeberger. Ah, okay. So we have we have basically three cameramen. Uh, uh, yes. At, at the first a day, unit. a day unit, uh, which has all the day stuff, including this, for example. Uh, yeah. No, this no. with it, this because this it's got Shepard. principles. Yeah. Uh, because it's got right. principles. Uh, Carol would say, "I want to do it myself." I see. But covering stuff of Vienna, which has no principles in I it, uh, I trust the uh, second unit to do that. Right. Uh, so you mentioned the cameraman's name, Schneeberger, and uh, it's part of the extraordinary mix of people who are involved in making mm -hmm. this film, especially from the Viennese side. Uh, Schneeberger, in fact, had, was a rather distinguished cameraman from Ufa days. Yes, indeedy. Uh, and, of course, totally unknown because we are uh, moving into Vienna. Uh, we were uh, we are a very small number of English. Uh, the night unit, which is the Kraska's unit, uh, there was a, a British camera crew with uh, Kraska, uh, a British camera crew with Angie Dunn and the Suez, and a Viennese crew with Schneeberger. Yes. And uh, um, your, your unit, uh, Angela, the, the sewer uh, unit, um, uh, had a... Did you get... Uh, actually spend much time with the other units? Were you very cordoned off because of shooting at separate times of the day? Yes, we were. We were quite separate. We went out in the daytime and went down the sewers into various places. We had to shoot plates um, and any other shots that involved... If they involved one of the artists, Carol came over to direct it. If it was purely technical shots, for plates and things for use in London, then we were allowed to do it on our own. And our cameraman was, was English, was Stan Pavey. Yes. Um, and uh, what was life like in the sewers for you? Well, strangely enough, I mean, everybody would have probably think the smell was horrendous, but actually it wasn't. It was a strange sort of smell, but it wasn't the sort of smell you associate with it. Yes. And <laughs> one kind of got used to it. It was, you know, going down there every day, it became a way of life. <laughs> and I do remember, you know, one incident where um, Carol was coming over to direct us, and a waiter, and I think he was probably from the Hofbrau Cafe in the full black, came down a spiral staircase with a silver salver poised to offer coffee to Carol, which is sort of, <laughs> you know, it's an indelible portrait <laughs> on my mind. But I was also, you know, um, on, on the day unit for certain things and certainly the, the end shot um, in the cemetery. But we used to, you know be mixed up, but one would only go to view, perhaps, the night shoot. But, uh, of course, in the sewers, you were also warm, relatively warm, uh, and it was pretty cold outside, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. But, um, I mean, I've seen some pictures, and looking back, I suppose one was young, and I can see I was wearing a skirt, so it mustn't have been quite as cold as yes. one thought or remembers <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um... Uh, we, we've we've obviously we're quite far into the film at the beginning of the film by now, and we've seen a lot of the leading actors, especially mm -hmm. from uh, the the this, as Joe Cotton, who's just mm -hmm. been uh, slugged, and uh, Trevor Howard and Bernard Lee there. 
Um, uh, Howard was um, a, a quite a complex man uh, from everything one gathers. Uh, <coughs> You mean Joe Cotton? Trevor Howard. Oh, Trevor. Oh, no, Trevor was uh, delightful. Uh, Boredom was... Boredom, uh, I worked a lot with Trevor, and Boredom, if he gets bored, uh, he goes off and uh, has been known to have a drink or two. Yes. And which is a good thing in Third Man because when you're talking about the day unit and the night unit... Uh, having worked Bernard and Trevor all night, uh, Carol would say, now, tomorrow I would like with the day unit to do the following. And I say, Carol, they've got to have eight hours off between calls. Yes. And he says, so oh, rubbish. I mean, I don't get off. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then I discovered that Bernard and Trevor had found a nightclub uh, which was rather rare at the time, and they found it absolutely splendid. And night work, they would say, what time do we finish, Guy? How many more shots have we got? And I would negotiate with them, but um, I, I would let them go about 3 o'clock in the morning and saving some <laughs> stuff till 5, uh, and then send the second assistant... Uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, wake up, wake up, you're late, and get them out. And of course, oh, I'm terribly sorry, and they would rush on the set. Right. And we would. I got away with this for quite a few uh, days until, unfortunately, the 10 o'clock tea turned up, and Trevor said, hello, it's not lunchtime yet, it's tea. And um, so that we had to use a different technique to... to <laughs> Uh, but how to spread the actors out yes. is quite a problem. I can see that. Um, the, the business of the three units, Andrew, must have made a, a considerable continuity problem in itself, making sure that, that everything matched. No, not really, because, you know, um, the continuity, Peggy on the first unit was wonderful at her job, and therefore she would always communicate what she wanted to match. And in those days, you made very extensive notes, and they were all typed out. So you always knew right. what the other unit was doing, what direction, etc., and what clothes. Um, you know, it was the, the, the information was very precise. Although very often, isn't it correct to say, Guy, in the the location mm -hmm. shooting here in Vienna, there are geographically yeah. impossible shots. Oh, yes, all the way yes. through. But, I mean, Carol is uh, brilliant at this. Oh. I mean, he... Yes. Um, uh, this is in a, a, a picture I did afterwards with him, uh, there was a small boy in Borneo. Uh, there was uh, Trevor Hard in Ceylon and Robert Morley in England. The three never met, but they play a scene together. Right. Goodness. And that's, that's just his particular gift of holding it all together uh, in his head. Technically, uh, yes, and holding it in his head. Yes, 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 yes. And, and wonderful of the... Some of this is studio, some of this is real location. Yes. It's all melding together. But and was it Kraska and, and, and Reed, obviously, but Kraska who set the whole visual tone for the film? Was he, uh, as it were, the senior cameraman? Uh, well, yes, very much. Uh, the Carol was very keen on night. Night photography was very, very expensive. Yes. Uh, that's why you get very little of it. And unless you were uh, a very senior director, uh, you weren't let loose with a budget that could do the yes. number of nights. Uh, it involved enormous amount of lighting and... <clears throat> Kraska, of course, was thrilled to have the opportunity and somebody who... Uh, Carol uh, had already experimented with wetting streets. Yes. Which, uh, on Fallen Idol, which um, means that an arc lamp already uh, gives you twice the amount of light because it reflects. I see. Uh, <clears throat> and then he also is 
likes tilting the camera just a little bit to make it spooky. You yes. don't really realize it, but uh, uh -huh. there are moments of spook where uh, the camera's just yes. putting the audience... It's not quite a Dutch angle, but... It, 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 yeah, it's, and, the, and the audience aren't aware of it, but they're sort of... Um, they're aware that something is happening. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Um, I think he started that Vogue, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Reed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just tell me a little bit about Kraska as a person. Uh, <clears throat> small Australian by birth, I think. Um, quiet. Uh, very self-contained. I thought he had tremendous charm and, you know, great ability. Yes, I mean... He was, I think, one of, you know, the most brilliant cameramen around. I mean, per, I mean his personal life we don't want to get into, uh, right. because he could get into terrible sulks uh, oh, right. if uh, something... Uh, <laughs> okay. if his boyfriend wasn't there. Or, right, uh, right, you know. right. I see, I see. Uh, but that's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <Right. his, laughs> But, but he was, uh, 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 you would say that he, he had made a big personal contribution to the, oh, yes. to oh, the yes. visual no, uh, world no, no, of, yes. the, of the film. Because mm -hmm. it's such a distinctive style, isn't it? The third man sets a kind of a, uh, it's an image of a certain kind of filmmaking, which has never been equaled, really. Well, it's, it's classical filmmaking in the... Uh, the Carol believes that that your eye, you must never, um, if your eye is on the left-hand side when you cut, you mustn't cut over there. The, next yes. step, the, the camera, your eye should be taken smoothly right. in the editing, in the shaping. Um, we, we've been watching quite a lot of um, Austrian actors, uh, mm -hmm. along with obviously the American actor, Joe Cotton, um, who I very much like to talk about. But can we just talk about, in general, about the contribution of the Austrian actors? You, you, you obviously were going to use local actors. Um, where did you get them from? Um, Carol was introduced to uh, an Austrian producer called Paul Martin, who spoke very, very good English. And uh, <clears throat> as a theatre director, knew and had worked with all the best of the Austrian actors and was able to introduce them to Carol, who was thrilled to bits because they all had interesting faces, something uh, quite different. And uh, and Paul Martin assured him that they were very good actors. Right. And of course they were. Yes. And uh, uh, one or two of them didn't speak any English. Right. Uh, particularly the whole porter and the uh, <laughs> wonderful lady who plays the landlady. Uh, <laughs> but again, Paul Martin would just explain to them what uh, right. Carol was after. Right. This was shot in the Josefstadt Theatre. And many of them, of course, were leading actors, oh, big stars. Yes. Very big stars. Playing these very, very small parts. Very small parts. Uh, and I think partly there'd been no cinema since uh, in the last couple of years yes. in, in Vienna. Uh, and so they were uh, a little uncertain. This was a delightful lady. Yes. But uh, um, the, 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 the Viennese actors and, and, and the way that Vienna is shot uh, um, uh, give a, such a vivid sense of place. You, you absolutely know that you're in a, 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 an, it's an absolutely different environment to any English environment. Well, the, the, I think uh, all directors found out, and Carol in particular, when if, uh, that uh, the first 48 hours that you spend in a country, in a place, yes. uh, that you must remember and seize on immediately. Mm. Because after that, it becomes that you get quite used to it and yes. you forget that um, you know it doesn't strike you. Yes. It's what strikes you in the first 48 hours. In the first 48 hours in Vienna, uh, Carol was, you know, my God, it's like the Blitz over here. And, yeah. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's been knocked down. <laughs> uh, um, and 
it was everything that he saw yes. uh, knocked out by the sewers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, oh, we must shoot here, Guy. And that's marvellous. In total darkness, <laughs> uh, where are we? <laughs> There's no map. <laughs> Andrew, what was the, the, the sort of atmosphere in the city that, that you found? Were, were, were people obviously uh, somewhat uh, shocked and depressed by the situation? Yes, I think they were. Well, it was really just after the war and there was a lot of poverty. I mean, the Kirtenstrasse, the, the, the most fashionable street, was piled high with rubble. Yes. And um, there was, you know, you, there weren't many restaurants you could go to. I think there were two or three. Um, and there really wasn't too much to do. I mean, for me, I got... I, I found opera there because on mm. my day off, um, that was the one thing that was on yes. normally, at the, but at the Volks Opera, because the Stats Opera was bombed to bits. Yes. Um, so I can always look back on this film as the film that introduced me to <laughs> Grand <laughs> Opera. <laughs> uh, you know, but it was... Uh, you couldn't, of course, go walk into the Russian zone. You could only walk, yes. you know, around the English-French and American ones. But, you know, one got to know the city, I suppose, quite well. But it was an occupied city, as you've just said. Oh, it was said. an occupied yes. city, and, it? you know, things were very tough, I think, for the locals. The thing that I remember most is they're all trying to keep their dignity, uh, and every man was always with a little briefcase. Yes. And uh, everybody... And, and then you realise that there was nothing in the briefcase except a sandwich, or they were bargaining for food. I will swap you a packet right. of cigarettes for... But, I mean, you'd never open the briefcase to be... Uh, yes. Uh, they always... <clears throat> and I made a terrible mistake. Uh, I said to the uh, Viennese assistant, get me... 20 briefcases, because that's what all the background men with their hats with the shaving brush in, they should all have a briefcase. I know brief cards there. Yes, yes, a briefcase. Uh, and then we'll dish them out uh, <coughs> for the background action. And suddenly we got too many transport, and I went mad about there's a prop van and there's another one, and what's this van? And he says, it's for the brief cars. I said, for the briefcases, in God's name. I mean, they go, 20 briefcases, how can you be? Well, my schoolboy German was, brief cars is a letterbox. <laughs> and they had gone to great lengths and got the German <laughs> GPO to, to supply 20. <laughs> But that must have been a, a general problem, because not many of you, I think, spoke German, did you? No. no. And not many of them spoke English. No. Unlike no. now, where almost everybody no. in Vienna speaks That's English. Paul Herbiger, yeah. not a word. No, not a word. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I suppose he was really like Paul Herbiger was the equivalent of a sort of Lawrence Olivier in, yes. in Austria. Uh, yeah. and, the, and he's wonderful in it, just absolutely yeah. wonderful. What they all was, are. What was magic for me, that um, Bobby Kraska asked me whether we could put a light in that window or something. And it's midnight, and I bang on the door, and a lady in a dressing gown opens, and I says, Bitter Schoen, would it be possible to put a light in your bedroom window? <laughs> uh, and I said, you know, we are making Der Dritter Man with uh, uh, Orson Welles, uh, Joseph Cotton, I mean, total yeah, they have never yeah. seen or anything. And I said, and Paul Herbiger. Ah, yeah. Paul Herbiger. Oh, yeah, come on. Quite you know. uh, yeah. So from then on, anything that was a problem, you just said, uh, and Paul Herbiger will be, oh, oh please, lie in the bed, do anything you want. Oh, fantastic. So um, he, um, he's, he actually plays wonderfully with the English language, but he really, it was all phonetically... Talked to him, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Quite remarkable. Remarkable. And here's a, a little word about Joe Cotton. Um, Joe was very miserable. Yes. <laughs> By nature, he's miserable. Yes. Um, he uh, 
had a feeling that um, as an American he was being sent up in the part. Uh. Uh, and he was playing uh, everybody's got a good part except and all the jokes are about you useless, uh, <laughs> oh, right, yes. go back to America. <laughs> so he's unhappy about this. He um, had a bad scene because he and his wife came in by train and the Russians roused it from Rome. Yes. And the Russians roused him out at the frontier, and they stood with their passports and their <laughs> dressing gowns and what have you. So uh, Mrs. Cotton wasn't over in thrilled. <laughs> uh, and they had uh, personal problems, and, and Joe was not a happy person. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and drinking quite a lot, I think. Uh, mm, privately, yeah. no, he was never, he was, uh, uh, like all American actors, absolutely professional. Uh, it's only English actors who make us such a fuss <laughs> about, um, oh, you called me at 10 o'clock and I didn't work until 12. Yes, right. Uh, American actors, I get paid from 8 to 6. After 6, go f <laughs> <laughs> but they have a, a total attitude. And uh, uh, Alida Valley was, uh, uh, at the time, uh, uh, quite a, a big star. She was a, she'd gone to America, hadn't she, she'd to make a career there? She'd gone to America. Yeah. Uh, she again, um, this is the yeah, wonderful a, woman, Blaub Troy, Hedwig Blaub Troy. This is the Edith Evans, uh, yes. as you say. Of and, and it's an acting yeah. dynasty, actually. Mm -hmm. The, the yeah. son is all grandson, mm -hmm. great-grandson is doing it now. What's she talking about? The police. They are searching my room. She doesn't know what it is. My God, that's so strange. She's wonderful. And she's extraordinary rude. I mean, she wrote all this stuff herself. Right. It's wonderful that you never thought to, or nobody ever thought to subtitle the film. So we don't know exactly what they're saying. Well, you we say, she say Ruskies and Americans. <laughs> yes. You can hear them more or less, yes. Yeah, but it, you, it's wonderful. Um, so, yes, and uh, Valley was, uh, she was just known as Valley, wasn't she, uh, for a while? Well, uh, she was under contract to Selznick, who was yes. sort of a nuisance. Uh, we yes. never saw him, so there was no problem. It was all the, everything happened <laughs> before and after. Yes. Uh, and she was a lovely lady surrounded by this all-male cast. Yes. Uh, and uh, I adored her and got on, we got on very, very well. Yes. And so beautiful. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and wearing uh, just this one outfit which is very unglamorous. Yes. Selznick wanted her to, you know, have changes and what have you. There's this constant mm -hmm. sense of life in the film, and every detail, yeah. every every every, uh, every corner of the frame mm -hmm. has got something interesting, yeah. some detail. It's, mm -hmm. That's that's Reed. Is it uh, Okraska too? Well, that's no. Carol, I mean, really frames would yes. never. Uh, it's, the lighting is. Uh, Carol never moves the camera without uh, a movement. I mean, he is yes. horrified at the zoom lens. Yes. And horrified at um, uh, the brutality of today's editing. <clears throat> And I think the matching of the sets to the original, yeah. you know, the exterior. Uh, Vincent Corbett has a, I mean, has a huge art department. Yes. But they, everything in Vienna was collected, photographed, yes. reproduced. Uh, you remember that huge plaster stove mm. that is a big part of the set? I mean, that was made because they couldn't uh, find one. All the mouldings, they're all based on something. Uh, you, you shot for about uh, eight yeah. weeks, I think, in Vienna. Uh, six or eight, I'm not quite sure. Something, so, something like that, because you... Yeah. Mm. Uh, um, and a little bit longer in Shepparton. You were about 12 yes. weeks in Shepparton, uh, weren't you? Now, uh, this scene, for example... Uh, was in Shepparton. Was in Shepparton. So the, all those Austrian actors were brought over, of course. Uh, 
<laughs> or when Herbiger the... for one day, mm. uh, which thrilled him <laughs> because he was a fisherman. Oh, and, right. it, and the reason that he did the picture was when he found out he was one day in UK, somewhere in German Street there is a Rolls Royce of fishing wheels. <laughs> right. And he came back on the set and he said, Guy. And he showed me <laughs> this reel. And, and uh, it was unobtainable for four or five years. And this was magic for him. Of course. Went back absolutely happy. Couldn't care less. So the picture was success or <laughs> failure. He got his fishing rod. She came over, of course. Yeah. Once you got to Shepperton, you were shooting more regular hours. Absolutely yeah. straightforward. Yes, yes. And what, 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 what happened to you then, Angela? Well, we, we, we were, had various bits and pieces. For instance, I spent a lot of time with the pussycat <laughs> on, on Orson's oh, yes, foot, the, the morning, double, the of course. The queen. The monkey queen, yes. <laughs> and because Carol would say, no, he didn't quite like that. Pussycat hadn't looked up quite the way he wanted it to. And then we'd have to try, you know, get the cats to do it. There was so we spent days. The, the cat unit stuff, after the <laughs> rushes at lunchtime, uh, you see the first unit, and then there was a rush of people for the doors. But Carol had to sit there with Angela and Stan Pavey whilst a thousand feet of Moggy went through. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think, Carol, in a moment, there's a bit where you probably... <laughs> <laughs> We tried different <laughs> ones, different food stuffs. Um, it's a question people often ask about successful movies. Did you feel that there was something rather marvellous that you were working on while you were doing it? Or were you just getting on with your jobs? I don't think one... You always hope that the film you're working on is going I mean, to be you, successful. You, you but know, you know no, that it's, it's good. going to be... Uh, yeah. uh, well, um, there was... No publicity for the film. When it, it opened on a Thursday, as all films did in those days, I think at the plaza. <laughs> and um, we had one unhappy experience because, uh, well, we'll go into the Zissa story later. <clears throat> uh, but it opened at the plaza and there were queues round. Somehow um, people... Uh, decided yes. they want to see the picture. Yeah. Joe Cotton wasn't a big star. Nope. Orson wasn't a big star. Nope. There was no... Um, Valley wasn't but, a big star. Uh, Valley wasn't... Uh, <coughs> but the buzz went and then it... <coughs> Dr. He didn't speak any English. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of animals in this film. It's very yeah. good. Well, tell them, children and animals is big. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That your dog? Yes. Would you mind, Mr. Martins, coming to the home? In the, um, uh, uh, of course, the, the film is this wonderful tease of a build up to Harry Lamb's mm. appearance. Yeah. Um, and indeed, uh, shooting it was a bit of a tease of waiting for Orson to begin yes, with. Yes, uh, Orson was uh, hiding in uh, Rome uh, because he was negotiating his contract with Corda. Uh, he got um, a lot of hotel debts and he got some films that he'd shot were stuck in laboratories and all yes. sorts of uh, you know, typical and awesome thing. But you must remember that there was no telephone between London. Uh, uh, civilians weren't allowed. You were only, you had to queue up and wait for one hour a day. Uh, it's very complicated. Uh, and Orson wasn't turning up. And this is how... Uh, Carol, by accident, saw the shadows as we were waiting, doing something, and said, uh, Guy, can you make a shadow and uh, running? So you run on them. And he said, that's good, but you're a skinny little bugger. But, uh, you get a big hat and a um, big coat, leave the coat hanger in and try that. Yes, that's good. Uh, and so now 
Harry Lyme's uh, wardrobe is set. <laughs> you know. and didn't we have had, a choice, did and it? We set, <laughs> we set the location manager to Rome to get Orson's measurements. <laughs> and Orson played hard to get. And he said, I'll be down in a second, and then vanished. <laughs> and so they had to bribe the... Uh, telephone lady at the Excelsior uh, to put her through, you know, he said, but Orson has bribed me not to put you through, I bribe you more to put me through. So eventually, uh, eventually Orson turned up. And unfortunately, sewers were day one for Orson and he'd uh, uh, disappeared down the sewers. You were there, weren't you, Angie? Yeah. And, and well, I was there, for, but actually his first day... Uh, was when we ha when he came to the Prata. There was just the one shot of him going yes. past oh, the merry-go-round, yeah. which then disappeared after that, and nobody ever did find it, because it wasn't ours. It was part of the Prata. But he just about got himself to the Prata, and that wasn't <laughs> difficult. Orson was, Orson was uh, one week in, in Vienna, and that was all. Yes. Uh, he was very naughty. There was a, a moth-eaten circus playing somewhere. I mean, the relics of a wartime circus. And Orson said to the operator, um, would you like to like my next picture? Uh, oh, yes, Orson. <laughs> uh, yeah. I said, get the camera on someday and we'll go and shoot some. <laughs> uh, and... Um, well, it, it never happened, but that's typical also. Because it'd be nice to shoot to say you would bother the camera and the operator. <laughs> you presumably all were rather uh, excited, or at least interested, to, to, to meet this man, Orson Welles, this, this, who had already yes. got a huge myth attached to him. Oh, yes. I, he was quite quite um, a starry figure. Yeah. Uh, Had you all seen Citizen Kane? Oh, yeah. Yes, I mean, they were yes. all brought yeah. up and on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. uh, yeah, so, you know, the knockout picture for all young, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. avid future filmmakers. So it's a very interesting situation for Carol Reed yeah. to be directing a director. Um... I don't think it sort of ever it ever worried it ever worried him or occurred to him. Uh, and this is funny. Can't play the fiddle. And it's sort of tied on, so he hasn't come <laughs> off. <laughs> this was based on a real um, nightclub, wasn't it? Uh, not the Oriental, unfortunately. The Casanova, this, uh, this, was, uh, this is a respectable one. Uh, the, <laughs> the one that uh, that uh, that we really wanted to use, and that we. Graham Greene was uh, yes. absolutely adored it. Uh, was Greene around at all, by the way? Uh, no, uh, not during the shooting, during the, uh, during the uh, um, pre-production. Pre yes. It came out with, uh, only for a couple of days and showed, and showed Carol one or two things that he thought was interesting. Yes, yes. Um, so... Um, uh, just to revert to Wells uh, again, um, so, so you, you, you'd um, he, you'd all you knew that you'd been kept waiting. Everybody knew that he was playing um, truant. No, I don't, yeah. don't, the, the crew kept busy, and this is right. uh, uh, Carol is you know must keep moving and keep the crew busy. Yes. This is why we play with shadows, and um, yes. we'll give the cat a bigger part. <laughs> yes. We have muggy uh, shots of the. Uh, and some beautiful stuff, uh, so that Orson turned up. Yes. And um, down the sewers he went, and Carol found a, a rather nice setup with some a pipe sticking out and water, and he said, it'd be marvellous, Orson, you know, here you are, and so on. So. And Orson blew his top, and we had to listen to this extraordinary speech about we're all... Uh, Everything is cellophane in America, and we're used to eating <laughs> shit and what have you. And I remember it's about ten o'clock, and everyone's got sandwiches. <laughs> and all you know, so this fun. We were quite used to it, as Andrew <laughs> said. Right. Um, and uh, he vanished, and I thought, "Oh, hello, Gary, you've got problems here." And he said, "He's just nervous." <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had to build a. Uh, a a sewer set in in Shepparton, which didn't help matters. 
You, you would have done that anyway. That, that wasn't... Uh, mm, no. Uh, Not uh, as much, no. I don't think. Oh, they right. would have had I to see. build. No. My goodness. Because all the others went down. The, you know, Trevor and nobody else objected to yes, yes, working. Yes. But maybe it was the sight of the English crew eating their, sa their bacon, <laughs> sam well, bacon or whatever it was, sandwiches. <laughs> there's, a, there's a theory that um, a lot of uh, Wells' rather bad behaviour before the film and even during it was nothing to do with Carol Reed, nothing to do with the movie, but all to do with his war with Alexander Corder. Uh, I, th I think there's a, there's a great deal of truth right. in that. Um, so, so we better, here's this remarkable figure who's, who, whose idea the film was, really. It was his idea to do something set in Vienna, something which captured this post-war um, feeling. But my recollection was that halfway through Fallen Idol, uh, or towards the end, Carol said, you know, I'm very, very worried uh, because uh, here's a picture, and the star of the picture is this odd little boy. And if the audience don't warm to this little boy, yes. who isn't Shirley Temple, who isn't, <laughs> who isn't Freddie Bartholomew, uh, we're in deep shtuck. Uh, and he was worried about that. Yes. Uh, because you can't exactly get excited about Ralph and Michel Morgan. It's not exactly it, it, a yes. sex <laughs> yes, yes. Um, And he said to me that he, he said he enjoyed working with Graham Greene enormously. Uh, who had, of course, written The Fallen Night. Who had written The Fallen Night, and they enjoyed that. And he said to uh, Graham, have you got... Um, a sort of comedy thriller because the thriller because um, when in, in doubt make a comedy thriller this is what he <laughs> said to me guy you'll miss some of the laughs you'll miss some of the thrills but with luck there'll be somebody left um, and Graham said to him I got, well I got one idea about a man who's walking down the strand and on the other side of the road he sees a man whose what funeral he went to <laughs> yes uh, and Carol says, well, that sounds a rather interesting. This is where I was arrested by the, the Russians who ah. um, took the camera away and then fortunately we were informed that we'd hired it from the Russian studio anyway. <laughs> so right. they cancelled it out. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and they went to talk to Alex Corder uh, and said, we've got this idea about a man who's walking down the strand. Why the strand? Mm -hmm. Why not Vienna? Uh, and Graham was no idiot. said, yes, I, it, it's a man walking down the high street in Vienna. And I said, that is better. I like that. Yes. Now, what, what he meant was that he had a lot of frozen money that couldn't be exported right. uh, from. Yes. Uh, and so, could you all move to Vienna? Uh, and so Graham Greene went off to Vienna and uh, very quickly came up, delivered, delivered, developed the story, yes. found the sewers, etc., and uh, shaped the script and came yes. back and he and Carol got down to it. Yes, yes. Angela, did you have any direct contact with Alexander Corder? Um... Not, not really on, on that film. I did know, I knew his brother, um, Vincent, better. Yes. I used to get a lift, lift home from the studio when we were <laughs> back there. He was the art director, of he course. He was the art film. director, yes. But Alex was, I mean, he was a man. He would come occasionally on the set back there, and you could see his charm. I mean, he was the sort of man who could get the boys to do anything. Right. Um, a production manager would say, will you work late tonight? And they'd say no. Alex would phrase it differently. Yes. Yes, of course, Alex, because he had the personal touch. I mean, he, he, was, he was quite brilliant at that. He knew how to handle people. And a great cosmopolitan, obviously. Oh, a, a yes. sophisticated man of, of the world mm. and all of that. And I think, sadly, there, there really hasn't been anybody to replace him. Because, as I understand it, the problem with uh, Wells was that uh, Wells had a three-picture contract with uh, Corder, and nothing had happened so far. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, 
apart from this outburst from Orson, uh, uh, from then on, uh, but he's finished in Vienna. Yeah. Uh, and a few doubles were used, etc. in the sewers. Uh, I doubled for him on top of a bubble. And then he turned up at uh, Shepparton. Uh, and that was exciting because he had basically the Prater wheel scene. Yes. And uh, Joe and Orson have a relationship that goes back. Way back, yes. uh, And you could see the tension uh, in the pair of them because Joe doesn't want to be <laughs> uh, eclipsed, by eclipsed and uh, he knows Orson's tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and Orson knows Joe's tricks. Yes, and yes. Uh, uh, they play a beautiful scene. Yeah. And Carol is watching these two. Uh, and he had hardly <coughs> anything to do because they, they the were playing off each other beautifully. Uh, and then uh, that was, this was all done in in a day, yes. and in the second day there's the walk off from the thing, and uh, we did take one, and, and uh, suddenly there's a, a bit of chatter and wasn't this is hold, uh, hold a second, and uh, I heard the cuckoo clock for the first time, yes, and everybody laughed, right, right, and. Um, Joe didn't think it was that funny because he <laughs> thought he'd got the last line. <laughs> uh, and Karen said, all right, okay, let's go again. And uh, one take of the cuckoo clock. Uh, and uh, that was it. And then uh, there were some pickup shots in the in the sewers uh, the, um, and the dust scene. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Montague reports that there was a, a little scene in the in the, the Prater in in the in the uh, in the wheel. Uh, in the wheel, uh, which ca caused well a great deal of difficulty. That he had to keep going over and over and over and over and over it, and took something like thirty-five takes to get it right. I think she's talking rubbish. Is that right? I cannot. Because it was all in studio. Yeah. Right. I remember uh, being on the set watching that one. I mean... It, and so the, the, no such thing happened? No. No. I mean, you may have done take two. Two. Yeah. But uh, never more. All oh, right. I mean... Now, it, it, the, the, there's an, an, a, another much reported story about uh, Orson trying to suggest to Carol Reed certain shots. And Carol Reed very uh, deftly saying, that's a wonderful idea, Orson. Shall we just try it my way first? And then doing many, 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 many takes to exhaust Orson so that he... Do you think all of that's uh, fictional? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> because, the, I mean, the only... The only... Uh, I mean, anybody would think... I mean, Orson goes on and on after, particularly after Carol's death, and in yes. France in particular, uh, he played the Zissa, he wrote the script. <laughs> yes, <of course. laughs> he knows absolutely yeah. everything. Um, and uh, think of it, I mean, he's he's running around, he pops up <laughs> and thing, and the only dialogue that he's got is the is the wheel. Is the wheel scene. Yes, yes. Uh, and that was shot in a perfectly professional, straightforward manner. Yes, he contributed the Speech. cuckoo clock, which I suspect he got from somewhere else. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, he said he did. He um, claims he saw it in a play in Budapest in 1932, which seems a little unlikely. <laughs> well, I wonder what, how good um, his Hungarian was. There, there is, uh, yeah, there is, uh, I will tell you later, it's a Graham story, which you may yes. not know. You see, this is lovely quality of lighting. Yes. Uh, Reed and I suppose Kraska as well seem absolutely f fascinated by the human face. Wonderful, wonderful portraits of people all the way through. Well, uh, I was, uh, you know, all the um, faces that you see. Yes. I was sent off with a with a camera unit, or sometimes to bring them back, because the night unit had a second camera, and I went down to a um, 
uh, at midnight, all the poor, there was the soup kitchen, and I would go down and with a few marks, collect faces from, uh, from the soup kitchen and bring them back for Carol's approval. All right, you can shoot that. And he really taught me a stern lesson because I came back one day and I said, you'll love this face, Carol. He's got half his mouth missing and the nose is all squat. And he says, never, ever make fun of people who have a physical problem. Right. Uh, here's one of them. Yeah. Uh, and from now on, I can't bear people who stutter. <laughs> right, right, right. right, right, right. Was He's there any particular reason of, of re for that, or just his natural compassion? His natural compassion. Mm -hmm. He had been an actor himself, hadn't he? Yes, a bad one. He shared a dressing room, I think, with Larry, and I forget who else, in, in, in St. John. Really? Uh, Edith Evan, with um, Sybil Sondheim. Of course, Wilfred Hyde White was a, one of the great character actors yes, of the yeah. British mm. cinema and stage. Yeah. Mm. I've reached his zenith in uh, My Fair Lady with uh, um, yeah. uh, Rex. Uh, mm. uh, mm. mm. Carol liked him enormously. Ladies and gentlemen, I have much pleasure in introducing Mr. Holly Martins from the other side. Well, <clears throat> bring the car, and anyone else would like to come. Don't be long. Huh? He allegedly behaved badly in the war, and we were shooting the nightclub, and suddenly uh, a Viennese actress who was refugee from Hitler came on the set and screamed and hit him. Really? <laughs> created quite a little scene. Chiefly influenced you. Gray. Gray? What Gray? Plain Gray. Oh, that's Mr. Martin's little joke, of course, sir. We all know perfectly well. Zeng Day wrote what we call... This is the man. Yes. Mr. James Joyce. Now, where would you... We couldn't get into uh, amongst the Viennese themselves. They had, uh... Where would you put Mr. James Joyce? In what category? Can I ask? Is Mr. Martins engaged on a new book? Yes. It's called The Third Man. A novel, Mr. Martins? It's a murder story. I've just started it. It's based on fact. Why, it's Mr. Popesco. Oh, very great pleasure to see you here, Mr. Popesco. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Popesco is a very great supporter of one of our medical charities. The man with the briefcase I see in the back there. <laughs> I'd see you were doing something pretty dangerous this time. Yeah? Mixing fact and fiction. That's the one small tilting. Me. It's very interesting, yeah. It's un sort of unnerving, isn't it? Yeah. Too far along with the book, Mr. Petesco. Haven't you ever scrapped a book, uh, Mr. Martins? Never. Pity. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if there are no more questions for Mr. Martins, I think I can call the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Did the script change very much on the set? No, not at all. It's a wonderful yeah. shot, I mean, the staircase. You see Vienna back to studio. Yes, yeah. yes. And incidentally, doubles on the bottom of the stairs case because that was Vienna, but we didn't have this All right. actors. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it is extraordinary when you think this isn't a set. This is, this is the end. Yeah. Yeah. Dazzling lighting by mm -hmm. Grasco. Just genius. 
It's like a sort of dream scape, isn't it? Yeah. The, uh, that's, that's the cathedral, of that's course. That's the Stephens. The Stephens no, no, dorm. Just, uh, not... just a church. Ah. Yeah, that one, well, yes. Yeah. You see it at the beginning. Let's see, now it's starting to tilt. Yes. That's the wetting the street. Yes. This isn't Santa Fe. I'm not a sheriff and you aren't a cowboy. You've been blundering around with the worst bunch of racketeers in Vienna, your precious Harry's friends, and now you're wanted for murder. But I'm drunk and disorderly, too. I have. What's the matter with your hand? Parrot bit me. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm only a little fool. I'm an amateur at it. You're a professional. Been shaking your cap and bells all over town. Payne, get me the Harry Lime file and get Mr. Martin's a large whiskey. I don't need your drinks, Calloway. You will. I don't want another murder in this case, and you were born to be murdered, so you're going to hear the facts. <laughs> you haven't told me a single one yet. You ever heard of penicillin? Well, in Vienna, there hasn't been enough penicillin to go round, so a nice trade started. This, of course, is the. Um, the, the sort of dark aspect of Harry Lyme that we're mm. about to discover. Um, do, do you uh, do you know about this? The suggestion that Peter Smollett, who was the uh, Times correspondent, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's no question that uh, that he uh, brought this to Graham's yes. attention. Yes, right. Yes, he'd written he'd written a series of stories about Vienna during mm. the war, hadn't he? And this yeah. penicillin plot mm -hmm. was the was his. Contribution. He was, I think, a, a, a script consultant or something, uh, so designated, uh, something like that. And the name Callaway came from a general. Oh, the, uh, the uh, which general? I can't uh, the question is, uh, Graham spent some time with Smalley to have told him stories and what have you. Yes. He incorporated them in the script. And uh, should uh, Smollett be paid or get a uh, title or what have you? Yes. Um, so I think the agents sorted it out to everybody's I see. satisfaction. Yes, yes. In the laboratory, we forced him to give information to us, which led us as far as Kurtz and Lyme. But we didn't arrest him. I mean, it can hardly be a great secret if you lived in Vienna. Yes. Yes. So would I. We'll bring him in. I can't. He disappeared a week ago. It's more like a mortuary than police headquarters. We have better witnesses. Look here. Carol and Willie Wyler were great friends, and they used to send their pictures to each other for comments. Oh, really? And. Uh, Carol sent him in America, a uh, third man, and uh, I went to see Carol one morning and he showed me, look what Willis sent me, and it was a Cartier Silver spirit level. <laughs> <laughs> like from Willis. <laughs> <That's very funny. laughs> um, did Carol read, uh, uh, invite Suggestions, contributions? Uh, very much so. Uh, a long story, but Carol, uh, every Wednesday evening, ran the rough cut as, as it built. Yes. Uh, and he swore, swore by it because you're watching, and then he would, uh, very early on, go into a corner and do a commentary for each scene. Uh, Anna does so and so and so and so. Yes. And, and so instead of missing this, yes, there'd be missing scene, but what? Uh, that's the Oriental. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and you're watching, and he'd see the film grow in front of his eyes. Um, and he says, you, you know, I've got to be careful. Joe is becoming a bit of a Gumpf. I mustn't let uh, the others jump on him so much. Yes. Um, uh, 
And then he hears himself saying, and we so and so and so and so. Guy, we don't need that scene. It's perfectly obvious. Uh, but, you know, uh, and then, when in doubt, there were two old cleaning ladies who cleaned the cutting rooms. And if ever um, hypothetical uh, poison is going into the glass, and there's yes. a big bottle that says poison, you know, uh, and uh, everybody says, you know, you, uh, you, you don't need poison on the glass, Carol, or on the bottle. Get the ladies in. Hello, Carol. Hello. Is this uh, just watch as these two men, uh, one doesn't like the other, and, and he says, uh, have a drink and see what happens. Uh, and he says, right, did you notice anything? Oh, poured him a bloody great whiskey, he did. <laughs> um, and that's it. They were so busy watching the, the amount of drink going in that they weren't reading the right, label. Right, so right. we'd see we do need the label. Right. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Not at all, Carol, any time. <laughs> I used to take notes in the theatre for him, and I just... And some of the cuts were very, very short, and you'd just sort of get a nudge that yeah. meant make a note. <laughs> and it was fascinating, because that's where I learned how I'd type these out for the editor, and then we'd see it, you know, the next week with all the changes, and yeah. subsequently the more changes. And he just knew how to build... Oh, tremendous. This is where we this all is... our editing. Yes. <clears throat> he was brilliant at editing. Did, um, uh, did he work closely with the editor yes, as yes. it went on? For, oh, yes. For oh, the rough yes. cuts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, telling him, uh, no, talking about it. He would tell him, mm. you know, what he wanted, which cup, which, mm -hmm. where. This is, this yes. is no, my favourite time. Oh, is, they're they're your feet, are they, Guy? Uh, no, this is, this is my cat, and this is my shop. Yeah. Now, this is not the same cat. No. No. <laughs> this <laughs> is not the one Orson's we used to either. do forever. Uh, not yes. Orson's feet either. Getting him to do the, that. He's better dead. I knew he was mixed up, but not like that. I knew him for 20 years. At least I thought I knew him. Suppose he was laughing at fools like us all the time. So um, here, as it happens, we've got Cotton and uh, Ali Davali, and uh, they were both Selznick's artists. He brought them to the film. Uh, and do you, do you, uh, you, you've both said that, that Selznick wasn't around at all during the shooting. No. But you, nonetheless, before, Guy, when, when, it was, when you were setting it up, he had been, uh, you were yes, aware of his presence. Uh, uh, well, we were aware that uh, Graham and uh, Carol had gone out to California and um, listened to Selznick's uh, points about the script. Uh, his main one, I understand, was he was afraid that Calloway and everybody were making fun of Joe Cotton as the idiot American yes. getting embroiled in stuff that he doesn't understand, etc., etc., yes. and is, is being not a leading man. Everybody else is a leading man. And uh, Harry Lyme shines above everybody. Uh, those obviously were one of his um, uh, concerns. But uh, Selznick had a, a mania of sending notes to everybody. And my first uh, encounter with Selznick was when Carol returned and just before we went off to Vienna to location hunt, uh, he handed me notes from <coughs> Selznick, which were absolutely idiotic, you know, make sure that uh, Harry Lyme doesn't wear red socks, uh, <laughs> that the pencil not be sharpened in scene uh, 42. <laughs> and I said, Carol, what do you want me to do? He said, forget it. Shoot, watch, <laughs> And the notes were thrown away. And fortunately, uh, we had no interference from Selznick, to the best of my knowledge, throughout the picture. The problem started post when the picture was not delivered yes. to America, and then eventually it reached, and yes. Selznick took eight or ten minutes out. Yes. 
Um, and it's very interesting that uh, that, it, uh, that Zelznik uh, decreed that uh, Joe Cotton should record the introduction instead of Carol Reed. Uh, uh, so as it became a first-person narration in the mm -hmm. American version to counteract this thing about him yeah. being an idiot. Yeah. So here we are. There's my pussycat. Your pussycat. <laughs> what was it called, Angela? Can you remember? No, I can't remember. No, because we had so many. <laughs> they had to come in. <laughs> well, there was a Viennese cat, a shepherd and moggy, yeah. and the lady took the that shepherd and moggy away, yeah. and there was a, a stand-in for the one that had yeah. gone on holiday with the landlady. <laughs> so you see, they were all the same colourings, but and who is that standing in the doorway? Is it you, guy? Uh, no, stand, no, just a stand-in. Stand-in. Yeah. Yeah. All this is Shepherdson. This is the most all, wonderful, all isn't it? That's somewhere else. Something to do with the doorway. Mm. That's miles from the doorway. Yes. And that's somewhere else again. <laughs> that's just perhaps the most <laughs> wonderful entrance any <laughs> actor ever has yeah. Yeah. in any movie. Mm. You should pay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My goodness. Goodness. I think it's the way everybody remembers Orson. Awesome. Mm. I mean, you see, this impossible in that area to have a car. Yes. yes. But I mean... Uh... Yes, 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 yes. But that is a... That's Guy. Oh, right, that's mm -hmm. Guy. <laughs> there used to be yards more, but I was yeah. cut out because I wasn't very good. <laughs> but that, that, that moment is... That's the moment of Orson Welles appearing. It's, it, it, and that's our kiosk, I think. Yeah, it's a phony kiosk. Aha, yes. uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. The moment of Welles appearing is one of those moments that oh, it, you either have the charisma to do that or you don't. Mm. Yeah. And Welles just yeah, had yeah. it. And it. Oh. And you've, you've forgotten. You you've forgotten that you read in the credit titles that Orson Welles is in the picture. Yeah, You've yeah. long since forgotten, yes, yeah. and you expect him to turn up at the end of Police Inspector or uh, something. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a f false, isn't it? Uh, that's no. a phony... Yeah. Uh, that's the art fountain. department. But the art... Hmm. The art is... No, the, the little... The, the fountain uh, and yeah. the, the... The fountain and the... But the art is really... Oh. So the whole side of the road. I was on that side, his shadow was on that side, and there are no turnings on either side. What about the doorways? I tell you, I heard him running ahead yes, of me. Yes, yes, yes. And then he vanished out there, I suppose, with a puff of smoke and like a clap of... <laughs> To Angela Allen. Now, this is her own comment. This was first, Junette. Mm. Uh huh. We were treading on your actors. territory. Mm. But did you? Mm. Sometimes there were two cameras, though, yeah. I think. This is mine. I remember mm. that. There one. are the rats wandering around mm. in the background. And that's the brewery. It's astonishing, isn't it? Yeah. It's the river, really. It's a, it's a cathedral of yeah. sewage. Well, it goes on for miles yeah, in all directions. It's the river, I think, actually. Yeah. And those, those kiosks are, are lead to entrances to sewers, mm. so there's um, Green Park, uh, Bond Street, uh, all over. Yes. Yeah, now there's an entrance to... Uh, this was shot in, in Vienna? Yes. Yeah, uh, real. Uh. No, this is the studio bit. Uh, no, I think we shot this in Vienna, I think. But there is a cemetery sequence from yeah. the studio, though, isn't there? Because all those grave, the tombstones had to be yeah. specially painted, I think. Yes, Joseph Harbin. 
Medical orderly at the General Hospital. He used to work for Harry Lyon. Joseph Harton? Yes. He's the man I told you was missing. Next time we'll have a foolproof coffin. It was a lot of fun and games. So we shot this at the actual headquarters where all the, these boys go. Yeah. Uh, Trevor had gone to his favorite nightclub <laughs> straight from work and was in uniform and making a noise. And there was a real uh, major. <clears throat> major who said, who is that? Uh, and I said, you know, that's Trevor Hardietta. What's he doing wearing the king's uniform? I have a damn good <laughs> mind to report him. Which he did, the silly idiot. <laughs> and we were shooting when the, the patrol went off and they said, where are they going? Oh, there's some... A uh, spy in a uniform who's... <laughs> and we had to race over and rescue. And it all ended up with Trevor having to go and apologise to the CNC British uh, in the Schoenbrug Palace. Uh, and his apology was sort of really wasted because there were all the ATS of the period were all outside taking photographs and wanting autographs. Peter, TNC's Come back to the music for a second. It is extraordinary what it adds, that zither. And, uh, you, you, you were saying that uh, um, uh, originally, originally Corner just uh, got hold of Karras and uh, thought that he could use the music somewhere. But yes, he did. And then the sewers at the end were going to be the London Philharmonic, big uh, music. Yes. But then gradually, as these Wednesday night showings went on, and we of got the rough cut, the, of the rough cut, and as it built, as we be, heard this music yes. uh, that the editor had laid on over the silent bits and now over everything, we be Carol said, you know, we really don't need the London Philharmonic, yeah. uh, and so and so. Uh, and <clears throat> I will do Zither from one end to the other. Uh, and... Then the director of music for London Films, Dr. Hubert Clifford, said, oh, yes, sir. For, yes, I can get you a very good Zither player. Mm -hmm. And Carol says, I don't want a very good Zither player. I want <laughs> Anton Karras. And he says, but, I mean, Carol, that is stupid. That's like getting out of the sewers at the Place Clichy in the first blind beggar who's playing an accordion. You say, I want him to play the accordion for the film. I can get you good. He says, I want Anton. He says, but he can't read music. He can't write music. How do you think that he's going to do the music for the picture? He says, I will tell you. I'm going to install a movie over in my house. Uh, he will sleep all day. In the evening, I will bring a reel back and I'll show Anton to start the music there and finish it there. And then he will work all night. And when I come back the following evening, you will show me what he's done. Uh, and you're composed to the picture. And that is how... Uh, yeah. They composed. It's an improvisation, really. The whole oh, thing is. A, but there must have been a moment when he f hit on the Harry Lyme theme, which uh, became so. Well, that that is uh, that is uh, that that is uh, Anton Karras's composition. Yeah. Now, whenever. Uh, he would play La Vie en Rose, and you say, that's rather good, uh, but it's copyright. No, 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 ancient Viennese tune. <laughs> <laughs> because Anton was a busker. Yes, of course. He played in this, what they used to call horrigans. Yes. And that was his... The sort of wine, uh, about a wine, I mean, the wine, yes. in wine if people stupid, were happy, yes. he played happy music. If they were sad, he would play sad music. Uh, yes, yes, uh, quite. And but that's what is part of the freshness of the film is that you have yeah. this sense of a, a spontaneity yeah. about it all the time. Uh, it's quite remarkable, and it, it was so popular, so successful. Oh, it, 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 well, it, it made it, his changed his life for him. Come on. 
Of course. Financially. And his yes. joy was building uh, not only his uh, nightclub uh, restaurant, uh, but above a guest room for Carol with a six foot six bed. <laughs> because he was a tiny little Viennese, and all beds uh, in Vienna were very small, so that when Herr Reed would come, he will have. <laughs> Here, of course, is this the astonishing craft. thing that had survived the bombing. Yes. Yes. The wheel, the just the wheel. Mm, the Everything wheel. else in the in the yeah. Prater had been raised, yeah. and there, there was that. Built, I believe, by a Scotsman, a yes. Scottish engineer. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is at the wheel. Yeah that because you can see some sort of a uh, uh, few wooden huts where they were selling sweets or something. Yes. And this is where Carol saw the old man with a balloon. Yes. And that's, he said, you know, that's a marvellous face and it's a funny idea in the middle of the night to be selling balloons. The logic is that his walking back from the Prata uh, home, having not sold enough balloons. This was the first shot, um, that one of, of, of Harry walking towards the thing that he did in the film. Right. Here. Yes, that's Orson's first shot. Yeah, yes. that's the roundabout that then disappeared. <laughs> did it? Mm, but nobody ever did find it. <laughs> They have to sort of cheese it, you see. Mm, yes, I want to talk to you. Talk to me. Of course. Go on. I mean... Kids used to ride this thing a lot in the old days, but they're having the money now for a devil. Flashdirt? Gated or Oh, now this is shot in Shepperton. Right? Yes, all yeah. Shepperton. Yes. yes. We'd done the plates and for it just a the, second. Yeah. Yeah. I've been round that wheel for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the same old indigestion, honey. These are the only things that help, these tablets. These are the last. You can't get them anywhere in Europe anymore. You know what's happened to your girl? Hmm? She's been arrested. Tough, very eh? tough, but don't worry, old man. They won't hurt her. You're handing her over to the Russians. What can I do, old man? I'm dead, aren't I? You can help somehow. Holly. Exactly. Who did you tell about him? Hmm? I told the police. Unwise, Holly. And Anna? Unwise. Did the uh, police believe you? You don't care anything at all about Anna, do you? <laughs> I've got quite a lot on my mind. You wouldn't do anything. What do you want me to do? Oh, you reason somebody about. else to expect me to give myself up. Why not? It's a far, far better thing that I do with the old limelight, the fall of the curtain. You notice no zither. Yes. It's also very interesting that for the only time in the film, the dialogue has overlapped. Yes. Which is a Wells speciality, of course. Mm. I wish I could get rid of this thing. Mm. But that's how they found out about Anna. You told them, didn't you? Don't try to hear it. I won't swear to it, but it's possible that Orson and his uh, aspirin is it, yes. a piece of business that, um, which is harmless and Carol says, all right. Yes, yes, very lovely. <laughs> and probably annoys Joe. You ought to leave this thing alone. Have you ever seen any of your victims? You know, I never feel comfortable on these sort of things. Victims. Be melodramatic. Look down there. Would you really feel any pity if one of those dots stopped moving forever? Angie? Yes, help us one. Nine. One of your Looking better down, shots. Yes. <laughs> the old man told me to keep my money. Or would you calculate how many dots you could afford? To it is fabulously integrated. You, you'd never yeah. know that it was. And look how good the background yeah. looks on these shots. It's very fuzzy. Mm. It's brilliantly edited, Brian. I should be pretty easy to get rid of. Pretty easy. Wouldn't be too sure. I carry a gun. Don't think they'd look for a bullet wound after you hit that ground. Dug up your coffin. And found Harvey? Mm -hmm. Pity. <laughs> it's 
so it's an evil smile, isn't it? Yeah, and it's his, it's the oh, it's... Ca characterization in which he wears the least makeup yeah. in any film that he ever made. Yeah. It's him, mm -hmm. yeah. to a large extent, mm -hmm. the charm mm -hmm. and the danger. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced he's got a thing about his nose because in half the films he assists. Yeah. Oh, he did, yeah. Because uh, he's got a little turn up nose yeah. and he thinks it's not dramatic. It's That's I right. should not. Uh... And in some of the later films he made in the UK, ridiculous noses he stuck on. Yeah. Don't miss much here, poor devils. What do you believe in? I can remember doing the shot of Anna. Be kind to her. You'll find she's worth it. I wish I'd asked you to bring me some of these tablets from home. Holly, I'd like to cut you in, old man. Nobody left in Vienna I can really trust, and we've always done everything together. When you make up your mind, send me a message. I'll meet you any place, any time. And when we do meet, old man, it's you I want to see. Not the police. Remember that, won't you? <laughs> Don't be so gloomy. After all, it's not that awful. But what the fella said, in Italy for 30 years under the Borgias, they had warfare, terror, murder, and bloodshed, but they produced Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Renaissance. In Switzerland, they had brotherly love. They had 500 years of democracy and peace. And what did that produce? The cuckoo clock. So long, Holly. It's a dazzling piece of writing, and uh, uh, but uh, it, it, it's also said that it might have come from a, a piece written by Whistler, uh, various things. But mm -hmm. he, but Graham Greene always credits it. Yeah, yeah, well. yes. he he never... is, uh, yeah. I didn't write it. Yes. I know he deserves to hang. You've proved your stuff, but twenty years is a long time. Don't ask me to tie the rope. Okay, forget it. Dizzy Major? What is it, Brodsky? We have identified the girl. Here is her report. I've questioned her. We've got nothing against her. We shall apply for her at the four power meeting tomorrow. She has no right to be here. I've asked your people to help with Lyme. That's a different case. It is being looked into. So long, Major. In the last war, a general would hang his opponent's picture on the wall. He got to know him that way. I'm beginning to know Lyme. I think this would have worked, with your help. These are great close shots. <laughs> what price would you pay? It's wonderful the way it's yes. played out in all those singles. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Not funny. Because I'm very happy. I'm steady. 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 Right here, the Russians were essentially uncooperative. Yes. You didn't have much to do with the French, presumably, because you weren't no, shooting we in that didn't. part. Why has he done all this? And the Russians would... Uh, we got permission, and then a, then a colonel or a major turned up and said, no, the permission is no good, I haven't signed it. And, um, yeah. Uh, and so we're all arguing, and Carol says, get the first take out of here. Uh, so that if they <laughs> confiscated the camera, the film, at least we got right. one take out. Uh, and keep on chatting him up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but do we have the permission? And so and so, and he's reading and uh, <laughs> we're hurrying up take two. A studio. Yes. Miraculous, this mosaic that uh, he put together. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you off. See me off from here? Oh, I watched you onto the train. Uh, no harm in that, is it? How did you know I'd be here? Well, I heard something about it at police headquarters. 
Have you been seeing Major Calloway again? Of course not. I don't live in his pocket. Harry, what is it? For heaven's sake, stop calling me Harry. Can you think of an actress who would go through a whole film wearing that same outfit? <laughs> <laughs> right, Counterfeit, I have a drink. Yeah, it'll be cold on that train. I should be all right. You send me Joe Cotton's very good in it, uh, uh, doing exactly what he was frightened of doing, which is that he yes. plays him yes. weak and indeterminate. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I mean, he's, he's, he's extremely emotion. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, on the set, he was absolutely professional. Yeah. Uh, I think when he got home at night, he moaned to his wife or... Uh, uh, but th I think he was a moaner. <laughs> yes, by, by nature. By nature. But they were, they'd split up, they'd had, they had a big crisis in their relationship and they were trying to yes, and, uh, get back together yeah. again. And... I think, too, don't forget, they were used to eating well in the States. And yes, the, of course. And when he got back to London, I mean, food wasn't exactly wonderful. But it's it, uh, very typical of Corder that he... Uh, because he knew that Lenore played the piano, yeah. supplied her with a wonderful Steinway or a Lutner or something. I don't want anything else. You still want it. I don't want him anymore. What is fun with the balloon man that Carol made uh, to break up the tension yes. <laughs> uh, with a laugh? And uh, he just said to this Viennese, uh, who was a balloon, said, you tell him uh, that he goes up and he says, uh, buy my balloon, buy my balloon, uh, please. And uh, right action, and the man said, uh, uh, bitte einer schnuckermignon. And what of the Viennese for balloon is? And Carol says, what? The What's he saying? I said, yeah, that's Viennese for balloon. I says, well, the audience won't understand that. Silly. Make him say balloon. Uh, <laughs> and the man had never heard the word <laughs> before. So Carol goes up and he says, you say, look at me very carefully, balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks that Carol's a complete nut. <laughs> Carol says, no, no, balloon. Uh, is he and so he goes, balloon, no, no, balloon. Uh, and uh, see, there we are. He understands English perfectly. I don't. This. Uh... Well, come, oh, right. there you are. come in here. There isn't much time. I want to get a plane out of here tonight. So she talked you out of it. Gave me these. A girl of spirit. She's right. It is none of my business. It won't make any difference in the long run. I'll get him. Well, I won't have helped. That'll be a fine boast to make. Well, I always wanted you to catch that plane, didn't I? You all did. I'd better see if there's anyone still at the terminus. You may need a priority. Mind if I drop off somewhere on the way? I've got an appointment. It won't take five minutes. Of course. Why don't you come in, too? You're a writer. It might interest you. This is the biggest children's hospital in Vienna. All the kids in here are the result of Lyme's penicillin racket. See, Carol's not going to show you anything. Yeah. But you feel it completely. And he does, he does it wonderfully, yeah. doesn't he, Cotton? He really creates it. Mm. And the teddy bear. Mm. It had meningitis. They gave it some of Lyme's penicillin. Terrible this was city. studio. Payne lent me one of your books. Oklahoma Kid, I think it was. I read a bit of it. Looked as if it was going to be pretty good. What made you take up this sort of thing? Been doing it for long? All right, Callaway, you win. I never knew there were snake charmers in Texas. I said you win. Win what? I'll be your dumb decoy duck.
Was Vienna lit up like that at no, all? Or was that no, all crash? All crash. All crash. I mean, it's pitch black. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no lamppost worked. <laughs> right, right. Um, oh, There's your water again. <clears throat> That tells you it's cold. The editing is just yes. the flawless, the rhythm yeah. of it is. You again? No, I this can't remember. <laughs> Longer you're going to sit here. Shall I go over there, sir? No, no, leave him for a while. And he was a balloon sensor, yes, yes, yeah, he really was. Yeah. Mm. And Carol had seen him at the Prata, yeah. the wheel. What beard is just incredible. <laughs> Nein, danke. Nein. Balloon? Weiter gehen. Wir sehen Sie nicht. Gehen Sie weg. Boah, ich hoffe, ich glaube. Balloon, mein Herr. Gehen Sie weiter. Bitte. Your Honor. Right. Come on, schnell, schnell. Oh, I don't want anyone. Go on, Scarber. Astonishing, the old man. Looks like Nubal Gulbenkian. Mm. Mm. That's me. I mean, it's a wonderful shot. This isn't guy. It? And then we didn't have to take Orson up to the top. All <laughs> oh, right. Because he shot some time mm. later. God, that's very much the end as it was, that, you know, with bits and yeah, pieces. Oh, I'd forgotten the shot. It's fantastic, isn't it? You should have gone. The way it developed. How did you know I was here, anyway? From Kurtz. They've just been arrested. But Harry won't come. He's not a fool. Yes, Payne. Slip over there. See what she's up to. Right, sir. Don't tell me you are doing all this for nothing. What's your price this time? No price, Anna. Honest. Sensible. Sober, harmless Holly Martins. Holly, what a silly name. <laughs> you must feel very proud to be a police informer. Harry, get away. The police are outside. Quick. Anna. <laughs> For about three weeks, I think. Yes. Yes. In the sewers. Get 
Are they of the sewer police? Sewer police. police. Yes. They were real. Real. They were real yeah. sewer yes. policemen. Mm. They're they a nice, got... certain nice crowd. Mm. Because there were there were uh, people living down there, weren't there? They were down and outs. Uh, in yes, the sewers. They, yeah, they had to patrol it. Yeah, in the kitchens there were warm places. Mm. In fact, I gather they've just been disbanded or a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Not often. Mm -hmm. Or was that often? That's real often. Sure. Right. Yes. Now again, you'd expect dramatic music, but there's no music. Yes. And we're going to save. <clears throat> This is all real sewer. Mm -hmm. yes. Ah, yes. Because the water's running freely. I'll show you the, the first uh, Shepparton sewer set. Right. <clears throat> You were very busy little girls down there. <laughs> Here's Shepperton. That's <laughs> not always <laughs> <That's not laughs> <a double. laughs> yes. yes. <clears throat> you just climbed over the top. If you think I'm going to slip my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic set, I think, uh, matched Amazing. With, with the Amazing. original. Amazing. Yeah, incredible. Mm. Painted mostly? No. Yeah. Brick, brick, they actually. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, plaster, but you yeah. put, it, used to put it in like wallpaper. Yes, I see. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. Second time around, Orson wasn't so shot. <laughs> Shepperton, Shepperton. Hey! Is that you? You're through, Harry. Come out. You haven't got a chance this way. What do you want? You might as well give up. Carol Reed's fingers. Yes, <laughs> indeed. That's astonishing. Because Austin's very distinctive uh, 
hands. And reeds are quite different. Because we hadn't got the um, back projection ready. Right. We don't want to pay horse an extra day just for reason. <laughs> Not such a good actor, I don't think. Awesome. No, Carol. Okay. Carol, how is he? <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> it's a bit hammy. Finger. <laughs> I think he had much longer fingers. This is awesome, did yeah. Long and elegant. A great shot of him too. Fantastic. Mm. His eyes are very, very well edited for the censor, because that is uh, would have been censorable suicide, etc. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh really? Got to be very careful. Mm. Assisted suicide and all, <laughs> or murder. <laughs> I was definitely there for this scene. This was a, a very unhappy morning. It's towards the yes. end of the picture. We're all bone tired. And we got up at the crack of dawn. Uh, we've been working all night, and there's just Carol, myself, Schneeberger, a couple of prop men. Uh, and uh, we're going to shoot this. Callaway, can't you do something about Anna? I'll do what I can, if she'll let me. And the last shot in the picture was very much discussed in California with Selznick, what the ending was. Yeah. Uh, Wait a minute, let me out. Well, there's not much time. One can't just leave, please. Be sensible, Martins. Haven't got a sensible name, Calloway. This, um, this, this, this is the shot I do remember. Carol, <laughs> Carol is there and says, <clears throat> how far back do you want a leader? Uh, and he says, no, further back. back. And I got so angry that I borrowed the Jeep, took her a mile down, mm. and Carol says, what's she doing down there? And I said, Carol, when I drop my handkerchief, a leader, and she'll come, and you turn over when she's ready. The prop men are up the tree, because he said, oh, be marvelous drop. Yes. And we're running out of leaves. Go easy on the leaves. Joe is getting bored, and he says, can I light a cigarette? And Carol says, uh, yeah, I'll light a cigarette, Joe. A leader's about to say, which side of the camera do I pass? <laughs> uh, and Carol's saying, you know, if we fade it out now, nobody would know uh, what the end was. Yes. That'd be rather good. Uh, oh, we could take it right back and run the end titles on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then gradually, as we saw this, with the music, <laughs> uh, yeah. you don't touch it. Yes, yes, yes. Don't yes. touch it. Joe, stay where you are. <laughs> because I remember the first take, she was much closer, so you wouldn't have had such yes. a long Tension. walk. And it was yes, back it... again. Take two. Guy put her back a bit further about the third take. Uh, no, and then I put her in the jeep and took yes, her to the exactly. far end, and, so and I said, "Darling, away. keep me, keep an uh, eye on where me." Where was that actual shot? In, in the in, in the, the cemetery, cemetery in Vienna. It's the, it's the cemetery is the most marvelous cemetery. I mean, people go for picnics on Sunday there. Yes, because there's uh, Beethoven, there's uh, Brahms, there's the, all these huge. Uh, yes, and the most charming Strauss. Which is a, yeah. a statue, and he's got a violin yes. and uh, yeah. little fledermouse <laughs> flicking around. 